I'm going to explain petrochemicals, basic chemicals, intermediates, manufacturing products, and chemical consumer products. Hey guys, I'm Ross with RMP 24-7. We propel reliability and maintenance productivity. Let's start by looking at raw materials and feedstock to the chemical industry. Let's look at four different raw materials. The first one is crude oil or petroleum. A product of the refinery process is naphtha, which is widely used as a feedstock in the chemical industry. The second raw material is natural gas. Natural gas is mostly methane, but has ethane and propane that can be extracted and used as feedstocks. A non-petroleum raw material is coal. Coal can be oxidized to produce synthesis gas, or syngas, followed by synthesis of methanol to produce light olefins, like ethylene and propylene. The fourth material is plants. Sugar canes, for example, are fermented to produce ethanol and then ethylene. The hydrocarbons before the cracker, which is a big furnace, are usually called feedstocks, and chemicals that are post-cracker are called basic or commodity chemicals. Basic chemicals are usually the first products made in the chemical industry and the start of the value chain. The term petrochemicals is used for the chemicals entering the cracker, like naphtha and ethane, and for basic chemicals exiting the cracker, like olefins and aromatics. Products that come downstream of basic or petrochemicals are called petroderivatives, or simply derivatives, or intermediates as I will explain later. The first class of products in the petrochemical value chain is basic chemicals. Notice that basic chemicals may be referred to as petrochemicals, commodity chemicals, monomers, building blocks, and feedstock. They are usually produced in high volumes and at a low cost. The second class of products is intermediates, also known as derivatives. Intermediates are made when basic chemicals go through a reaction with another chemical to form new chemicals. For example, ethylene reacts with oxygen to create the intermediate ethylene oxide. Glycol is also an intermediate which comes from the reaction of ethylene, oxide, and water. Notice that ethylene oxide is a secondary basic chemical in this example. Another example of an intermediate comes from the oxidization of propylene to form acrylic acid. The third class of products is manufacturing products, sometimes referred to as polymers because the product goes through polymerization to get to this step. This is usually the end product in the chemical manufacturing industry before it goes to someone to add value to it and make it ready for final consumer. Manufacturing products cover a wide range of products, including what's known as specialty or performance chemicals, which are usually produced in lower volumes and have high profit margins. An example of this would be polyethylene glycol, which is known as Murilax. The last value chain addition is making consumer products like clothing, packaging, pharmaceuticals, furniture, healthcare products like shampoo, detergents, vehicle parts, and many, many other consumer products. 
Let's look at a summary of the hydrocarbons value chain. We start with feedstock, or petrochemicals, to the cracker, like ethane and naphtha. Then, basic or commodity chemicals, such as olefins and aromatics. Then, intermediate or derivative products, like ethylene oxide and acrylic acid. Then the last products in the chemical industry, which are manufacturing products like polyethylene. The final value chain component is the consumer products, such as clothing and furniture. Why is the value chain important to know in maintenance and reliability? This is because some folks don't have a good understanding of how their company is diversified to make money or the final products they are helping to make. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more videos like these in the future, then please subscribe and leave us a comment. Thank you.